You're late, Hopscotch. This is lesson MCADG-A04, in-game interface. In today's lesson, we're going to go over the top screen information, modes, and toggles. At the top of the screen, you'll notice we're in cancel mode. Each mode you switch, this will also change. Observe. Throughout the different modes, you will notice the text changes. If ever you wonder where you are, just look at the top and you'll see. Under that is the world name. When you wrote down the world name at the beginning, this is what came up. Keep an eye on this if ever you want to save more than one world. Under that we have level. Right now we're at level 111. Let's move up and down and watch these numbers adjust. The R and F keys will allow us to do this. R moves up. Notice how the numbers adjust as we press the R. We can go all the way to 130. Beware though, 130 is where the enemy comes. If we drop down, the numbers also adjust downwards. You'll notice here we're getting into the terrain. You can keep on going down below into the terrain and watch how the configuration changes. Eventually you'll hit lava. Keep on going all the way to the bottom and you'll hit the lowest level, which is zero, where it's infinite lava. Good luck to try and get there. If you're able, the highest of the resources you'll find are way down below. Now, if you hold the shift key and press R at the same time, you'll notice the numbers jump by 10. Pressing the shift and F key, the numbers lower by 10. This is a fast way of moving around on the terrain. Under that, we have cycles. Right now, we're on cycle zero, which has started. This cycle will move upwards infinitely, as long as you can keep on going. The percentage that you see to the right will go until 100%. Once it hits 100, the cycle will tick and a new one will come in. After the first 10 cycles, the first enemy wave will come. After that, between 9 and 14 cycles, the enemy will come again. Beware though, only the recog knows when they're coming. The first mode is Cancel Mode. When Cancel Mode is on, you'll notice every window is closed. This allows you to observe the terrain and its surroundings without any obstruction. Cancel Mode is also used to stop a command from happening. You'll notice if you activate a drone to perform a command, use the Cancel Mode to stop it beforehand. For example, Excavate, click on two cells, the drone is about to perform a command. Using cancel mode, we select a highlight. The drone will no longer perform the action. Highlights blue or green, it doesn't matter. Another example, cancel mode. Click on the highlight, it turns off. Cancel mode is also used to stop a utility drone from building. If we decide to place a construct in a certain location and we realize afterwards that we don't want this, we can click on the cancel mode and then click on the object itself. Be careful though, if you place a construct in a location that you don't necessarily want and you only cancel after the utility drone has acted on it, he will abandon his collectible. You must go get it. To the right of cancel mode, is excavate mode. Click the button to reveal the icons. You'll notice on the left hand side we have seven icons. Discover, excavate, collect, survey, discover, excavator, collector. Let's start with the first one, discover. As you navigate through the terrain you will notice that many times there are gray cells around you. If you would like to know what that particular cell is you will need to use the discover although it must be adjacent to a known terrain that you have access to, so you will not be able to get those. Here are a few unknown cells. Click the Discover icon and select a terrain adjacent to it where a utility drone will have access. Unpause the game and watch your utility drone discover what's behind it. The importance of being able to discover what's behind it is to avoid the surprise of lava. If you decide to dig this out before knowing what's behind it, you could spring a leak. That's a problem. 
The excavate button, when you click on it, allows you to dig a particular terrain. Digging terrain is the next step because you need these to begin your industrial process. By clicking and dragging the mouse across and letting go, you're able to dig more. We'll get more into detail about these particular modes. Now there are moments when excavating one piece of terrain at a time is just not enough. That's when we need to use mass selection and collapse. You'll find out soon enough that if you're not careful with collapsing, you could find yourself underneath being crushed. Although, that's an interesting strategy against the enemy. Observe. We go into excavate mode. And instead of clicking one at a time, we click and hold the left mouse button and hold the shift at the same time. And drag the mouse. When you hold shift, you see a little window select. Drag it across. And you'll notice how yellow highlights over the whole thing. You just go right across. And we let go. Now high speed here. Now there's quite a few units that just went underneath. We'll see what happens if they stay or not and do they get crushed. So this piece of terrain, as you can see, is connected by the back. Terrain will always stay together until the last adjacent piece is removed. So this will remain there and the edge of the world is still considered attached. The moment we remove this row, this whole piece is coming down. To make it easy to understand, let's go into the top mode. Right click and you'll find yourself in top mode. We go up one level and we can see the row that we need to take care of. Hold, shift and left mouse button, drag across and let go. They're digging from underneath. Let's go back to the 3D view by right click again. And you'll see we have a few more pieces left. Click, drag across and let go. There's one more piece, and this whole thing is coming down. Let's do that in slow motion. And down they come, and you can see all the units being crumbled. And they even got hit. You can see their HP levels went down. Not enough to die, but some a little worrisome. So as you can see, this way is very efficient. Keep this in mind if you need to do a dig fast-tracked. Let's go back to the previous example and continue with collect. Once selected, allows you to gather the particular collectibles, the little cubes. Same idea, click and hold the mouse and highlight over the cubes. And once you let go, they will be highlighted and you can collect them. At the beginning of the game, those next icons are not available. Use technology advancement to unlock them. The survey icon, once selected, allows you to understand what exactly is going on throughout the whole map. All this terrain can be identified using the survey. If you need to know a specific type, it'll be quite a while for you to go around this map without this dialog box. Using this box allows you to choose something specific and know exactly where it is within the range of the levels below and the levels above. The Discover Task Manager allows you to use the Discover command as we just did before, but within a range from a specific level up to a specific level and between rows and columns. The Excavator will do the exact thing as you saw before, excavate a terrain, although it'll do it in a range between levels from a level to a level within cells and columns, and not only that, to ensure you avoid leaks. The Collector allows you to go through the whole map without having to look and find each little piece. This collector task manager, when you perform the task, will run through your whole map based on the rules that you give it of levels, columns, and rows. If you would like to be specific, you can choose exactly what type of collectible you will gather. The question marks next to each icon, which you will also see throughout the game, links up to a wiki page. Now we'll look at build mode next to excavation mode. We click the icon and we reveal a list of all the constructs available to us, as well as those which are not available yet. You'll notice they are grouped by category, structural, power utilities, P-trans systems, terminal systems, mechanisms, thermal systems, industrials, depositories, and military utilities. We also have a command area where the utility drone will perform actions based on what we choose. 
Using build mode, we are able to place the constructs on the terrain. Anyone in blue we have access to. You'll notice on the left-hand side, we have the icon for the specific construct, the name of the construct, as well as how many we have altogether. We click on the construct itself, and as we drag the mouse around the map, click to place. We use spacebar, and we see the utility drone, build. Once he's finished building, we pause the game. Don't forget to always pause the game, because you do not have as much time as you think. Let's build another. Elemental Depot. Click to place. Unpause. Now you'll notice that these two are attached to terrain and to each other. Most constructs need to be attached to something solid. They cannot float. There are a few exceptions, however. We'll look at those later. Pause again. Let's have a closer look. You'll notice as we place the construct, it removes itself from our list. At the beginning, we have a care package. The care package is identified here in the build mode. Later on, we'll talk about how to use these properly. As you recall, in cancel mode, you were able to select the highlight and it will be removed. But as I mentioned, if you don't do that on time, the utility drone will build it. In build mode, under commands, we have deconstruct. Using deconstruct and selecting the object, unpausing, it returns to its collectible state. This way, the utility drone can return it back to its storage. Next is wiring mode. You'll notice in wiring mode, these are the constructs that we see in build mode. The difference here is that there are no categories. Nothing is highlighted except for the main factory. That's because this is the only construct on the map so far. The power of the industry comes from the gathers. These are then put into the generators, and from the generators to the constructs. Let's do a small example. When the new constructs are added, in wiring mode, you'll see them. Generator units provide power to the other constructs. Therefore, what we see at the right-hand side with these red squares, one goes to the gather, and the other goes to the other construct. We click the icon, and then choose the gather. Watch as the power rises. So now power is flowing from the gather to the generator. We'll do the same with the others. Available power means what these particular units can obtain. Notice the speed as well. That is also dependent upon the type of gather that you have. While that's powering up, let's add our turrets. Some constructs like the turrets give a visual representation to say that they're connected or not. Others don't. So when you're in wire mode, be sure to look at the available power for each construct, and then you'll know. We'll choose the second red available, and watch what happens when we power the turret. It's ready for war. The optimized gather could be connected to this turret, plus two more. So the higher advanced you get, the more you can charge. In this example, we attach a terminal to the door. The terminal itself does not need power. The door does. In order for the door to work, the terminal is connected to the door. In this list, you'll notice the terminal is here. However, the gateway or door is not. There is no available power necessary for the terminal. The terminal's purpose here is a use. When we hit the use button, the utility drone will flick the switch and the door will open, allowing in or out. The industry mode is used to create all the necessary elements, binary agents, components, constructs, ammos, modules, and processing fragments. In order for industry mode to work, we must have constructs. So in build mode, we place our constructs according to the strategy we desire. You'll notice the speed of some of the utility drones. The constructs have different weights. Some utility drones take a bit more time to get there than others. Once the constructs are built, in industry mode you will see they appear. This menu is not like build mode. By selecting one of the constructs in this mode, you have access to its task. The process to build your complex industry begins here. Later on you'll see exactly how to do this. In this mode, you have access to each construct's available task, whether it is to create parts or to create the construct as a whole. 
In order for the industrial mold to work properly, each construct must be wired. Right now you can see this particular one is offline. We will then be able to start the processing. These squares represent the directional links in and out. You'll notice the construct that's placed here, the elemental depot, is connected to a storage and another storage. One storage represents the pieces that are going into the elemental depot, and the other storage represents where the pieces are going out. Look at these like the chain in a factory. Follow the chain, and eventually the piece will come out to your desired element. Let's do this as an example using the directional links. Let's go into wire mode. Now you'll notice in wire mode, we have our depots also. Elemental depot, which is this one. Foundry depot, which is the one in the back. And assembly depot, which is this one in the center. We're going to go more in depth about these later, but for now, let's just focus on the directional links. When we open the card for the elemental depot, we see three squares at the top and one at the bottom. The three squares at the top represent the in. The square at the bottom represents the out. Why do we have so many in? And that's because we can have more than one storage unit that holds different pieces coming together into one depot. Since we only have one for now, we just need to use one. Let's show this in another way. We click the elemental depot first which opens a dialog box regarding the directional links. All of these that refer to set input are waiting for the storage to go into the depot. The out is what happens afterwards. From the depot, where does it go? It goes over here, which essentially is the in for the next factory. As I said, that creates the chain. So we click once, we click one square, we see it is coming from this storage, out to that storage. Give it a top view. In the top view, you can clearly see that from the storage to the depot, from the depot to the next storage. Let's continue the chain. The assembly depot from this storage to the next one and you can pretty much figure this out that is directional links do not reverse the link it will not work and of course this won't work anyway until you power it you'll learn how to do this in the next few chapters the industrial mode also provides you with quantities to the right hand side you can see constructs are available only the rest need to be produced Let's power up that construct. Power is applied to the generator. And now the elemental depot, which as you can see, it's written offline. Now, if we go to the industry mode, the available power that you see here corresponds to the power in the dialog box. If you would like to produce certain elements, you can see based on the power at the right, how much it costs. There is plenty of power going through this elemental depot to produce these items. Be careful though, you will notice at some point you might need more power. Keep an eye on this gauge. When you're up against an enemy this size, it's time to go to management mode. And believe me, this isn't even all of them. You'll find management mode left of the pause. Let's click it. Management mode deals with all things utility and military drones as well as offensive and defensive strategies, including countermeasure defensive systems and turrets. On the left-hand side are the friendly troops. These are yours. On the right-hand side, theirs. Also at the top, we have two special categories, utility drone utilities and utility drones. These two relate to your miners. The rest is all about attack and defense. Now, judging by the look of your squadron compared to theirs, I think you're a little outnumbered. This is the kind of ill-managed planning that you need to be careful about. You're definitely going to get wiped out. As I mentioned before, you have six drones that you have access to. Defender, War Machine, Scout, Tank, Commander, and Juggernaut. We'll get into greater detail with these later on. Let's look at the first card, the Defender Drone. 
When we click to reveal, we see how many there are. As you highlight over them, notice the text changes, so that you know exactly where they are. Use the magnifying glass to zoom towards them. When you're in a firefight, it might be hard to keep track, so don't forget about this little icon over here. Each card has the icon for the unit, its status, whether it's moving, idle, in attack mode, or halted, its coordinate, HP, and a maximum HP, as well as some shortcut icons for its commands. When we click the card, we get more information about the drone. There's the icon with its rank, what the drone is, coordinates again, HP again, for its rank, it has four rankings. Rank number four, the lowest, to rank number one, the highest. The manual commands are written over here. Follow, attack, move, restrict, halt, recycle, and some skills ready to go. Shield boost and self-detonate. These skills will change depending on the unit. Corresponding to the icons on the left here, the first one is attack, then the move, then restrict, and then halt. Underneath we have fitted modules. Modules are added gears to give that drone an extended boost. There are many to choose from. Use the question mark to learn more about each one. There are some specific for each unit and there are some that are general for all of them. At the bottom, if there is something that happens to your unit, it will be written down here. Each unit has their own set of cards. Your defensive systems, such as the missile silo, must be well protected. In the silos card, pay attention because the image will change depending if it's armed or unarmed. Blue means it's unarmed. You'll also notice the offline. You guessed it, you have to power it. And believe me, the missile silo takes a lot of power. There are four directional links for the silo, like you saw in wiring mode. Here, it's for loading the missile silo. There are different types of turrets, each one with a special unique ability to take down the enemy. As always, use the question mark to learn more about it as well as how to build them. Lastly, the countermeasure defense systems. These are your mines. As you can see, they are slightly transparent. There are two types of mines, standard and triggered. Triggered, you have control over. Standard, you don't. Once they're placed, it's anyone's game. Just like in industry mode, if you want to inquire about how to build something, select a question. In the wiki dialog box, it explains everything there is to know about them and how to build them. Consult the wiki often. The military drones also have a combined set of commands. The military drone utilities. At the top we have halt, unrestrict, and unhalt. We'll get more in detail about these later on. We also have the ability to fire off all their skills at once. Each drone has special skills that are devastating to the enemy. As opposed to firing them off one at a time, you can use the combined command and do it all at once. Equal to yours, as only the recogs know, the enemy has their own. Here you can see red to define the enemy, although at the beginning of your game, you do not have this. This must be unlocked, so it's a surprise at the beginning to know exactly what it is you're going to be getting. As you can see with the Defender Drone cards, there's quite a few, and it looks like they have the highest ranking. You'll notice by the gold ranking, a Military Class 1. The technology here is such that you can see what the enemy has. Again, you do not know this at the beginning, but you will know it very soon when they start hitting you with it. Each unit is specifically designed for war, and each unit is specifically designed to retaliate far better and far worse than you. So be careful. Don't be deceived by the fact that they look like yours. They are not. The intelligence behind these machines are far greater than anything we've ever experienced. It is up to you to match that and beat it. At the bottom right, we have the toggle displays. Sometimes you might find there's too much information around the drones or constructs. Use these toggle icons to turn certain information off. The first icon is the construct HP display, similarly to these bars. It'll show up when a construct has been damaged. The utility drone HP display, the military drone ammo and HP display, HP being the green, ammo being the yellow. The level display, or ranking, and finally the edge marks display. Lesson over, Hopscotch. Now get out there and practice what you've learned so far.